in Maine, in unorganized townships like the one we're in, I'm up here in the North Maine woods in the wilderness, so you're allowed five days with conibear killing style traps. Any foothold trap where the animal's gonna be alive, you have to check once every 24 hours. So what I'm doing is I'm running conibear traps for Martin and Fisher. It's a pretty long line. I'm gonna set the trip. Yesterday's line was 80 miles round trip. Uh, the first day one, I think we did a little bit over 100 miles. And then today, I have no idea how many miles this is. Today's line isn't like a good loop out and back. It was more like um, sniper locations where, you know, I wanted to hit this one section, this one section near another section, then another section near another section. And all of a sudden I got a bunch of side roads and off roads and it's going to look like a spider web if I traced it on the map. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving it a try. If you guys are returning and you've been here before, really appreciate all the support for the channel. If you're interested in buying any of these furs, um, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll include my email address and you can reach out to me by email. What we're going to do is we're going to tan a bunch of these hides and we'll ship them out to you after the season's over. Weather-wise, it's kind of unseasonably warm. I'm surprised I'm catching as many fur as I am right now because normally it takes like a really nice cold snap or some good snow cover to really get the fur moving. But, you know, I'm setting really good locations and I'm in areas where I don't believe anybody's trapped for a long time. So it's almost like virgin territory in, in a lot of these areas. There's pretty much no competition where I'm trapping right now. Today's going to be a, what we call a short check and then the next time I check it, it'll be on like a four day. I think I'm going to get my three different lines on four day checks and then on the fifth day I'll work at camp or I'll work on the furs or work on maybe finding new territory or moving some some select traps around different different areas and then i'll go boom you know check line number one line number two then line number three in three consecutive days and then have what you might call an off day but it's a, it's not going to be a day off it's going to be a day of probably even harder work so i love it i love the hard work when you're when you're running a line and you're trapping and you're doing something you're passionate about and when you're working for yourself it's never work you know when you do something you love it's never work so that's what i'm doing come along today i'll show you guys the sets i'll show you hopefully some catches you know i know like i said we're, we're checking short sets today so i'd be surprised if we have many but we're gonna check about three dozen sets today so there's a good chance you know and i'm i'm setting up good areas so there's a pretty good chance that we have some catches so stay tuned guys really appreciate all the support for the channel and uh more to come today i'm bringing two different guns on the trap line i have uh my 12 gauge remington model 1100 shotgun a little over a little overkill for these birds but sometimes you got to reach out sometimes you got to smack them out of the air and i'm hunting for food you know like i'd love to be able to shoot two to four partridge every day for for meals and get that protein in me and then my other one is a model 7600 carbine 30-06 for deer you know i'm not it's not really deer hunting when you're riding a trap line or, or running around the trap line it's more like deer shooting if, if i get the opportunity but the, the partridge are kind of sparse right now up here you know it's a good year a great year for partridge last year was one of the worst ever due to a cold wet spring uh, kills a lot of the babies a lot of the chicks or they just aren't able to even have chicks but this year was a really wet uh, really warm dry season and there's a lot of young birds this year the trouble is in my area they just they the state just sells so many moose permits and so many moose to people and they get so many people up here shooting birds now you know it's a it's it's a little bit of a side effect that a lot of people don't think of is it's really hurt the bird hunting and the bird population with how many permits that the state sells every year for moose and when i say sell you know they sell the, the moose herd that's what it's it's the moose herds for sale if you really want to look at it and the reason they're giving out more and more and more permits every year is because it's a money maker for the state and then all of those moose hunters come up and they come up in big groups and they've pushed a couple of the weeks back or so that way people get to hunt birds too while they're on the hunt and they also have uh even started the bird season early for moose hunters it's a really strange thing you know it's uh so you got a lot of people up here shooting birds and road birds and birds that could re reproduce for next year but 
that's the way the state manages it so i don't expect a lot of birds on the trap line this year and i'll take what whatever i can get oh we've had fire we are fired looks like we made a catch sweet nice beautiful martin yeah right in the top of the head all right All right, we got a Martin. Sweet. There she is, guys. Nice little Martin right there, first one of the day. Uh, only the second trap I've checked today, but absolutely beautiful fur, beautiful pelt. Really cool area, really cool animal, pine Martin. And if you tuned in yesterday, or tuned into the last check, you noticed I had a lot of misses where um, where critters got the bait into the into the trap. So I'm gonna wire. Oh my bait, I can reuse this partridge carcass and wire it into my trap. Lock the box, safeties are off. There she is, nice little Martin. All right, that's a, that's a great way to start the day right there. Like I said, I, I'm an optimist, but I didn't have huge expectations for the trap line today just because uh, we're on such a short set. I just set this trap two days ago, and um, and we got a Martin already. We're one for two on traps today. If we keep that average up, we'd have a heck of a day, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but that's a great day. Any day you can catch one or even two furs is, is an amazing day. Pretty eventful morning so far on the trap line. I've just, I just saw a really nice buck. Um, got me a little bit excited. I was riding the line and and uh, a doe jumped right over the road and I was like oh boy I know what's behind her so I started to get out of the truck with my rifle and get loaded up and before I could get loaded up he was in the air crossing the road and he stopped for a brief second before going in the woods and I got to draw on him get the crosshairs on him it was a nice buck he had, a, he had a decent rack, and I just didn't have an ethical shot. It was uh, mostly back end, and that is not how I roll. So he went in, and then about 15 minutes before that, I had another one, uh, another small buck standing in the road. So the deer are moving. Nothing with this set. So we're coming. Obviously we're coming into the rut pretty hard for deer. And uh, he was chasing that doe pretty hard. She was flying across that road. And there's another road right where they're headed where I actually have a Martin trap. So I think I'm gonna scoot up that way and see if I can get ahead of him if I'm not too late. And see if I can get another look at that buck. See if I can get a more ethical shot at him. I would definitely take some meat for the pot. I know it's not, oh, deer hunting like, like we'd all like to do. I'd love to be on a deer track in the snow, but there's no snow. We just got freezing rain today. If I had some snow, he'd be in trouble. And my trapping day would be over. There are deer are definitely moving today. I wouldn't mind doing a little deer hunting today, but I know I got a lot to do, a lot of traps to check. I think I got about 36 I want to check today, which will get me through all of them uh, one time. But the deer are definitely moving right now. The rut's on and it's raining, it's cold, it's uh, super dark and overcast. It's a lot of things, a lot of things going well. I shoot, I shoot a decent amount of deer when it's uh, conditions like this. Let's find this box. 
There, there it is. All right. We got nothing. Big fat nothing. Well, got to stay on the trap line, got to stay focused. But I'm going to look for some deer in this area because this is where that nice buck was heading with that doe. All right, all right, big update for the channel. I just spotted a Martin trap from the truck and it wasn't mine. And it's about 50 yards from one of my sets. So we got some competition that I did not know we had. I saw ribbons and I thought, geez, that looks like a trapper's ribbons, you know, like uh, marking where his traps are. And I was like, now nah, there's nobody else up here. I thought I was alone. I thought I didn't have any competition. I thought I had these roads to myself. So definitely going to change the way I, I go about my trapping after, after knowing that I'm going to have trappers near me and that I have trappers uh, that close. There's another set right there. You can see it from the road. Interesting. All right, cool. Good to know. Good to know there's trappers around me. I'm gonna have to to work a, a little bit harder than than I was working. I was working really hard, but I wasn't in competitive mode, and I wasn't in uh, the the mode where I thought I needed to uh, to beat another trapper to it because this is no this is not catch and release. This is catch and kill. So if he catches that Martin, you know, 50 yards from my box, then I'm not going to catch that Martin. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different ball game now. That's, that's quite an update. Oh yeah, we got some action there. It's been fired. See what we got. We got nothing. Nothing but grouse. Throw another one in. That's the first miss on a Bell Isle in a green box. Back on the trap line. I got a. Uh, I'm all fired up now that I have some competition in the area. Um, those sets weren't there when I set up. I don't think they know that I'm trapping this area because I don't make my traps well known at all. A couple different trains of thought on that. I mean, if you trust people like I once did, you make it known that you're trapping an area with ribbons and, and uh, you can make traps a little bit more visible. We got a box right here. But if you don't trust people, like I don't anymore, then what do we got here? Oh shoot, we had a miss, I think. Nope, we don't have a miss. Well, I don't know what's going on. We're gonna find out. Yeah, we had a miss. All right, we had a miss, we're gonna wire a partridge in the back and uh, and catch this guy next time. But yeah, there's a couple different trains of thought on if you want to make your stuff well known that you're trapping in an area and hope that somebody else sees that and and uh, and leaves you alone. I mean, it's a competitive thing by nature, so I don't really want anybody knowing that I'm trapping in an area. I'd rather sneak in and catch all the fur and get out. This other trapper probably has no idea that I'm in the area. Maybe he does, I don't know. You do leave boot tracks in the mud and truck tracks pulling over in good spots. You know, I've, I can be a lot more competitive and a lot more stealthy. I'm pissed at myself because I, I listened to a couple buddies that told me I was, I was overthinking it and that I was, uh, that I don't need to be as competitive as I want to be. And they said, well, there's no other trappers around. You don't have to get in as far. You don't have to be as sneaky. You don't have to hide your stuff. You don't have to, to work as hard. 
And it's true, if you're the only trapper in the area, if that is true, you don't have to work as hard. And, um, but that's just not how I roll. You know, I love, I love the hard work. I love the hard work of trapping. All right, we got a good set there. And I actually like the competitiveness. That's, a, that's what made me into the trapper I am today. I'll, I'll fill you guys in on that story a little bit later on, but I think, uh, you know, some, when I first started trapping, I was trapping in an area with about five great trappers, you know, Clancy and George and, and, uh, I'm not going to name the rest of them, but so, and those guys are good guys. You didn't have to worry about getting stolen from or anything like that, but it's competitive you know they they they'd been trapping those areas for 20 years and i came in and had to learn it and and i didn't set if i knew they were in an area you know i i didn't want to move in on anybody hired and they were they were mentoring me a little bit help out here and there but uh, being competitive and trapping around other great trappers makes you a better trapper but it wasn't until i got robbed and cleaned out on the trap line that I became a trapper. Hey big girl. That is a huge cow moose. Two twenty bucks for a one sixty bucks. I can't remember. Looks like we might have had an activity. Uh, yeah, we've had some activity. Let's see what it is. Ah, I don't like seeing them those birds out there. Dang it. Friggin' missed one. Dang it. Yeah, see, that's a, a bridger trap, and man, that's got some sway in that trigger. Holy cow. Not a big fan of these bridgers. I'm gonna have to swap those out. I'll definitely swap them out next year. Pretty, pretty poor trap. I'm gonna reset it and cross my fingers. I'll try it again. <sighs> I don't know what's going on with all these misses. I'm, I'm thinking a lot of it is weasels pulling the bait back through, but that easily could have been a Martin pulling the bait back through with that trigger being as bad as it is. So all the ones I didn't wire the bait, I've been rewiring and uh, we'll see how the next check goes. Oh, wow, good trap right there. Interesting, I got a trap further in. I got a trap right there. And this, this guy set right here, I wonder. He probably doesn't know I'm here. That's another, I've seen that trap actually on YouTube. That's uh, that's trapping today. Jeremiah Wood, I think's his name. And uh, Jeremiah, I know you didn't know it, but you just set this trap here and I literally have one right there. So I'm gonna go check mine, see if I got anything in it. And then, uh, yeah, interesting. Smart minds think alike, I guess. You know, with Martin cover, it's pretty, once you kind of figure out what Martin cover is, it's pretty obvious. But about 30 steps away, I got my trap. Yep, there's mine right there. And nothing in mine. Mine has not been fired. I'm gonna guess he didn't know mine was there. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And trapping is a competitive sport. But but yeah, I thought I'd seen that trap on YouTube once before. 
with the red wire and the, the rubber block. But, well, good set, dude. Good luck. Let's see how it goes. There's, uh, when you're Martin trapping, a lot of the same covers get hit for centuries or for decades, I should say, because they're good covers and they're buffers and the loggers can't cut this cover out. I was wondering who that other trapper was and then, you know, the first box I saw near one of mine, I thought, um, I thought it looked familiar. I thought it looked like the one I seen on YouTube. And then this last one, you know, there's no doubt about it. I saw that one on YouTube once already. Um, we got a damn good Martin Trapper trapping around us. Now, I don't know, he's probably trapped here before and this is my first year in the territory, I don't know, or maybe it's his, his first year too, but we're probably gonna trap a lot of the same covers. I doubt on purpose, I doubt he knew I had a set about 50 feet past his when he set that. I, I was in there opening day and obviously there was nothing there, I wouldn't have set it. But, you know, and mine are pretty, for the most part, are pretty secretive. I'm gonna probably reach out to him and see about maybe doing a collaboration on a on a video for you guys. I'm sure if you guys watch trapping videos, you watch his, because he's got a trapping channel called Trapping Today. And um, and it might be a cool video to ride each other's trap line for a day or something like that. See how it goes, I'll reach out to him. And I, I know there's no, I don't think there's any animosity or anything like that. I doubt he knew I had a set in there and I doubt he knew I had a set in the other spot because even though I'm a little sloppy this year because I listened to a couple buddies and I wish I didn't, I'm pissed at myself for, for listening to them. I'm a little sloppier than normal this year, but it's still, I'm still, um, I'm still pretty hidden. You know, I'm still like, I doubt he knew I had a set there. We'll reach out to him and see, uh, See about maybe getting together on the trap line and shoot a video together and, and see how that goes. But in the meantime, I got another set right over here that should have a Martin in it. I'm gonna go in there and, and see what we got. Looks like he, he might have set another one right there. It's funny how, it's really funny how trapping is and, and how trappers are. You know, and if you get, obviously he's a good trapper. I know I'm a damn good trapper. And we're gonna, if you put us both in the same 10 mile square, we're probably gonna set most of the same covers. You know, if he's got an eye for it, or the same eye that I have for it. So, once you know what you're looking for and you know the territory and you know the type of woods to, to trap, you put 10, 10 good trappers in there and probably eight or nine of them are gonna make a set within 50 yards of each other. It's interesting though, competition makes everyone better. You know, I'll get into that later when I get home and can focus on, on talking about it a little bit more, but competition definitely makes every single trapper better and it makes everybody in life better. So I got a box right there, not looking good yet, but I got to get better eyes on it. Nothing. Good skunk. I'm gonna look around for his trap. Doesn't look like he trapped this side of the road. I think he trapped the other side of the road. This is a set I, I really love, this set. It's uh, it's open, definitely open area, but I got an awesome stream right there coming in. And uh, of course, oh, deer here. Interesting. We got some deer here. Uh, anyway, got a stream, got a buffer. It's got some mixed growth. It's not awesome Martin Woods, but definitely a travel way for Martin and Fisher. Any in this area, uh, there's green growth on both sides. So this is a through way. And uh, I think I'm gonna pop something good here before the end of the year. If I didn't already get one today, nothing, dang it. But, good looking set. I'm still fired up that there's someone 
trapping near me and uh, I'm even more fired up that it's a damn good trapper. He's He's got a great YouTube channel called Trapping Today. Uh, he shares a lot of knowledge with people. I've checked it out myself. So it ain't no slouch that's gonna be in this area. I'm gonna, I'll reach out to him tonight and see if he either wants to do a collaboration or, or, um, or maybe get together or something. Be pretty cool, be cool for you guys. And then if he doesn't, if he just wants to compete like old days, game on, I love it. It'll make me twice the trapper that I am right now. So guys, anything in life, just keep in mind, like there's two sides to every single coin. So, you know, if you were up here trapping and you had your line out and then a, a hammer trapper come in and moved in, didn't know you were there maybe, or maybe he did know you were there and sets on top of you. Um, you know, a lot of people might be like, oh damn, you know, or, or this sucks or that's that's a bad thing or something like that but man i see the other side of that coin is that's one of the best things that could happen to me through experience you know i didn't know this when i was a young pup and green and wet behind the, the ears and the collar but there's nothing nothing that can make you a better hunter or a better trapper or a better fisherman than competing at the highest level against the best in the field and that goes for anything, whether it's baseball, basketball, golf, anything, anything. You Competition will make you a better whatever you do. So I look at this like, oh, man. And this guy probably doesn't even know I'm here. And he's a hammer. He's a hammer. He can catch him. I've, I've seen his, his videos. And I look at it like, this is awesome. Now, the younger version of me, I probably wouldn't reach out to him. I'd probably just put the foot pedal down and go as hard as I can. But I think it'd be cool for him. I think it'd be cool for me. I think it'd be cool for you guys if we got together and did a little collaboration. And and uh, and I got no problem moving moving anything that we got close, even though I might have been there first uh, or I was there first. Because I'm going to cover a bigger area than him, um, and I'm going to be moving some sets over the course of the year. So no point in us both having boxes 50 feet apart or something like that but we'll see how it goes you know i'll reach out to him and 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 all and offer a olive branch first and if he doesn't take the olive branch he'll get the stick <laughs> but no it's a uh, competition guys there's nothing better in the world it'll make you so much better i when i was learning how to trap you know i took in all i could from anybody who give me any information it's a closed mouth sport and i also you know read as much as i could about it magazines books everything i could to learn it but what made me the trapper i am today and what made me into the legend of trapper joe was a fur thief a guy that stole from me stole out of my traps and he was 10 times better than i was at catching martin and fisher this guy probably the best i got to admit it he's probably the best martin Martin Trapper I've ever met. Maybe the best Fisher Trapper I've ever met. Skip's right up there with that too. He's a Fisher hammer. But I learned more because I had to get better and I had to make better sets and I had to hide my stuff better and I had to do everything better or else I was gonna get robbed blind. And um, and then I had to compete against this guy in the same areas, you know, and he'd known the area. You know, he hadn't trapped for like 10 years and Martin prices went up so he came back into the game but he knew that area for like 20 years so it it was competitive and i got way better because of it because if i didn't then i would have lost you know and i would have got worse and if you ain't getting better and if you're just maintaining you're getting then you're falling behind because everybody else is going to get better so i look at this as you know having somebody another trapper in the area at first i was like ah that you know that kind of sucks but then i was like you know what it's going to be awesome. Then I recognized one of the boxes off of YouTube and I said, all right, we got some competition now because before that, the only competition I, I had and the only person I was competing against was myself from 2005 or 2006, whatever that last year was that I trapped. And that, you know, it's hard to compete against something from 18 or 20 years, especially with the laws changing. But 
I'm willing to do it. But this is going to be awesome one way or another. I don't know which way it's going to go. I'm going to keep you guys posted either way. But it could be awesome, guys. Stay tuned. You're either going to get one hell of a collaboration from some from some people that have some knowledge. And, and I know I could learn a lot from him. And maybe he could learn something from me. And then we'd share their knowledge with you guys. Or, or you guys are going to see competitive version of Trapper Joe come out. So no hits on these last bunch of boxes. Nothing at them. All right, those were the first uh, the first handful of traps that have been out since opening day, and now those were the longest sets. So they they had like a four five day sit. Some of those that we just checked, and now we're gonna move into the ones that are only on a two day sit. So it's hoping to have a few more by now, but it is what it is. It's trapping. Let's go get some. All right, it's uh, it's wet, it's raining. Uh, this will be. I like this. Uh, gotta find it first. But I'm getting wet going in the woods, and I friggin' love it. I don't even care. <laughs> it's funny how that is sometimes. Doesn't look like a spot I would sit. How did I get in here last time? There's just so many blowdowns. A little bit of a disaster area. But I remember I, I got in there pretty good. I haven't seen a boot print yet. All right, we're getting closer. But yeah, it's uh, conditions are cold. I don't know how it's cold and not snowing, but we're right on the borderline. Probably be awesome if we get some snow. Snow makes, oh, there's the box. Snow makes everything easier when it comes to finding deer, moose, and fur. Looks like a big fat nothing in that one. Pretty cool set. Nothing. All right. So, nothing yet in a green box this year. In one of Adam's, my buddy Adam, that's trapping with us. One of our trapping partners. Uh, I have, I think, 36 of his sets. Um, be cool if we can get one in, in his. But these next couple sets I just set um, a day and a half ago. Pretty late at night, but man, do I like these sets. Uh, you get through three in on this road, and each one of them felt really good. <laughs> so let's see if we can get something off of them. All right, this box, I like this box a lot for Fisher and Martin. It was, uh, it's one of Adams, and it's a Bridger trap. I think it's either a 160 or a 220, and the trigger is sloppy. But I said it anyway, pretty sure I wired the bait. So if something gets in there, hopefully they get working around that trigger on that bait. And, uh, and it still works. But I got some extra bridgers at home at the camp that just didn't work. And I'm going to go to town with a file on them to see if I can fix them. Because otherwise it wouldn't be terrible trap. See it. What do we got? I can't tell if we've had activity or not. Doesn't look good. Nothing. It is wired. 
yeah, I can't remember if I have one or two more traps on this road, but I'll have to check my notes. But after I said it, I was pretty excited about it. I really like the cover. I like the woods here. set now this is a this is definitely a cool set I got I got two or three in here that should be catches nice big cedar I don't think I set it on these cedar I should have I think I set over there First checks usually take a minute to, to find the traps, get used to it a little bit, make a little trail in. There it is, right there. All right, cool. I'm seeing like 10 spots where I would where I'd set a trap today if I had to. Dang, that's another nothing. They're not liking Adam's boxes. That should have been a win. This is good, good, good woods. <laughs> Guarantee you this will be a Martin or Fisher before the end of it. This is good woods here. I'm Kind of surprised. Adam doesn't have the the hardware cloth on the back, you know, for them to see the bait and smell the bait and get that really good flow going. So I don't know. Maybe something visited this and didn't go in, or maybe there was nothing here. But I promise you, there will be. This is a great area. Boy, this is the right kind of woods for Martin right here and Fisher. It's um. The buffer. It's a travel way. Buffer in between two huge clear cuts. So they might not live here, but they're going to travel here. There's my box. Come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. Oh, Adam. We finally got... Nope. Got nothing on these green boxes yet. Oh, we got action. We've had action. Sweet. What do we got? Martin. Nice. There we go, Adam. Got one. Got one in the bell aisle. Sweet. <laughs> Martin number two for the day. That's awesome. Uh, this is a travel buffer. Super thick cedar and uh, spruce and and fir trees so pretty stoked about this i'm gonna reset it and and we're gonna get back on the trap line but we got two today that's pretty awesome wow beautiful brownie kind of pale brown feels like it was just caught it's not quite still warm but pretty close female Nice one. All right, guys, I just uh, just set another trap. It's I'm soaking wet and cold. I don't know how I cut my finger, but I don't get infected. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm soaking wet. I don't know if you can see my pants. Just stopped raining, and I thought about waiting the rain out and coming out later, but. The woods are wet, the woods are wet. There ain't nothing we can do about it other than wear rain clothes. Man, I hate wearing rain clothes. And honestly, it'd probably rip my pants running through this this woods, but 
I just set another one in a wicked, wicked cedar grove buffer. That should be a guaranteed catch. And then I'm gonna go up and check one I got up near a pond that I, I just, I don't know. It's probably not a high probability spot, but I like it, <laughs> so I set it. And I carried the dang box all the way in and it didn't look like I, I was hoping when I got in there, but I don't know, when you carry that box all the way in, I guess you just want to set it anyway. So I set it, and then the next road, I got, I really, really, really like the next road. I think I put like uh, five sets, maybe four sets on that next road. I saw some deer tracks, and it uh, just looks really, really good to me. So pretty high hopes, you know, we're at two Martin right now, pretty high hopes that we can pick up another one or two here before the end of the day. And then I got another new road I just set up that look phenomenal phenomenal so we might pick up some martin today guys stay tuned you never know what i'm gonna catch nothing nothing good skunk really looks good activity No. Nothing. Huh. Hmm. Looks like we got one. Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, he got around. Nice. And something got the bait. Sweet. Got another Martin. And then something came in, pushed him aside, and, uh, and got the bait, so I'm gonna reset it, rebait it, and then set a camera on it. All right, nice catch right there, guys. Another beautiful Martin, it's a little wet, but uh, big one. That's gotta be a big male. Yep, yep, big, big male. Number three for the day, what a day. And I got a trail camera I wanted to set up on one of these in the woods over here. So we're going to do it right here. Because after I caught him, something got in the box and ate the partridge. This one would be a winner for sure. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I just found a new road to me. And I am deep, deep, deep into the woods. It's a tough road to ride. It's really deep ruts, um, missing culverts, and super tight alders. And it looked like it was gonna loop. <laughs> but the beaver had a different, different mindset. Look at this freaking huge, huge. This is the road right here, right here. But the beaver have completely changed. This is not a road anymore. Used to go through there. Huge hut. One of the biggest feed beds I've ever seen. So, is that a beaver? So, change of plans, but definitely gonna mark this on my GPS. Or in my mental GPS as a spot to, um, to come check out some beaver this winter pretty awesome in here <laughs> but I want to get oh about five more uh, Martin sets in here I only have two with me <laughs> so I'm gonna get those set and then next time I'll pick up some duds and bring them in all right just got a set in uh, I put my last 220 box there because fish are really really like to visit beaver 
dams and beaver huts. There's a lot of activity there and if they can get, catch a beaver or or, um, or mink or muskrat or anything that's around a beaver hut, it makes for a great meal for them. So I'm gonna see if I can get turned around the beaver. Really got this jammed up. But yeah, and I have two more boxes left. That's it out of all my boxes. So I think what I'm gonna do is next set, I had some I checked today that I just was not in love with. They just didn't feel great. I don't know what happened on those. Uh, maybe it was late when I threw them in. I don't know. But what I'll probably do is I'll mark spots on my GPS where I wanna put traps. I'll throw these two traps that I have in. And then my next time I come to check these, I will bring you know, four or five duds and, and set up this whole road system that's pretty, pretty bad, pretty nice. <laughs> well, that's it for, uh, for boxes to put out. The truck is empty in the back other than a couple weasel boxes I got for throwing on uh, sets where I've, I've had some misses or I think there's a weasel messing with me. First time I got all the boxes out. Um, there's definitely a couple losers out there. I'm not gonna catch one in every trap or else they wouldn't let me trap. But I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> but yeah, there's a couple out there that maybe are just duds. You know, I don't know, maybe I carried it in, didn't find a great spot or didn't like the woods when I got in there, didn't have that gut feeling. And I still said it anyway, cause I carried the darn thing all the way in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up duds or pick up where I've made catches where I think where I think I'm only gonna catch one then I can move those around and get them get them in some new areas like this new area here so we got about oh well we got two more road systems to check both of them I just absolutely loved when I set up I think they might have about five traps on each so we're looking at ten traps left we got three or four Martin today geez I always lose track I think we got four. I think we got four Martin today. One, two, three, three. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think we got three. But, but yeah, so oh, tired. Holy crap! I'm getting worn out. I better, uh, I better find some energy because go oh, tight, tight run here. Because I got some serious skinning to do tonight. I got a lot of mark to skin and, and get hung out. But yeah, this road's this road's kind of a beast, and you can see why no one's trapped it for quite a few years. Can't tell. Yep, we've had some activity. What do we got? I don't like seeing feathers out here. Shoot. Miss and empty. And I had this wired too. Huh. All right, this is a 220 box on the edge of a nice green growth where a hardwood ridge kind of connects to it. And when I was setting it, I had a rabbit right next to me hiding under a stump in a root hole it's kind of cool so just kind of cool set i'm excited to check this one could be a big black fish ah, i see the box i don't see any activity yet oh uh, yeah <laughs> we got something we have some activity anyway we are fired off I believe. Yeah, it's from me. Two twenty. Okay. No tail, so I don't know. Let's see if the rabbit's still here. Oh, the rabbit's gone. Let's see what we got. If we got. Haha, <laughs> nice Martin in a 220. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice pale Martin in a 220. Alright. 
beautiful, beautiful Martin on the edge of this super green growth, uh, hardwood ridge, rabbit in here. No dice. Looks like we've had some activity. Yep, <laughs> we got a catch. Definitely got a catch. Ah, oh, nice suitcase to Martin. Beautiful. Put that in an old Victor trap. Well, there it is, guys. There he is. Big one too. Number five for the day. We're keeping we're keeping our number five average going. That's just unbelievable catching five every day. He was in here pretty good in in this 120. Nice. Yep, what a beautiful Martin. Look at that guy. Let's get this reset. She's ready to go. All right, we are reset. Martin, number five for the day. That's unreal. Well, I had this flag too. There it is, guys. Martin, number five for the day. Cannot believe it. What a great catch. First check on these. I just set these like uh, two and a half days ago, late at night, in the dark actually. So they haven't had a long sit, but if you make a good set, I guess you don't always need a long sit. Looks like nothing. And it is nothing. Good skunk again. Oh, good set. Gonna try to get back to camp at dark or by dark. It's uh, been a long day. Left first thing this morning. I probably have about eight miles under boot. And I think we're up to like 70 miles on the truck today. Oh, my legs are getting really strong. Starting to get back in shape, but I got a long way to go. I'll never be where I was in 06, but up here I might be. All right, that's it on this road system. Uh, picked up five today so far. I do have just a small handful to, to check on the way back uh, on the camp road, just super random ones. I'd love to get a line out over there, but I ran out of traps. <laughs> but I did throw a couple randoms out, you know, one one night after dropping Donnie off, I went out and probably set till oh, about an hour after dark. So it's a good idea to get eyes on them now and make sure that they were set correctly and everything went well. What's going on here? What's going on here? Oh. Another miss. Not looking great yet, but we'll see. Maybe. Ah, miss. Miss. Nothing. All right, one more trap left by camp in a little cedar grove in a buffer travel zone. It's only been out a day and a half, but we'll check it. Had a pretty amazing day. Big day on the legs. 
legs are getting stronger every day and and uh tired definitely earned my bed tonight earned my bowl tonight too nothing well that's it it's uh it's after four that was a long day on the trap line good 10 hour day a little bit more a little over 10 hours not home yet i'm exhausted <laughs> It's, uh, I'm wet, got a little bit of a chill from being wet from the waist down. It was muddy, greasy, slippery, falling all over the place sometimes. And uh, man, did I hike today. I got well over 10 miles today, maybe 15 in that range, but made some awesome catches. I'm stoked. So happy I was able to do it. So happy for uh, getting out like that and being able to do this and being able to trap and, and physically and mentally and, and everything else being able to do this is, is just awesome. I'm excited to wake up tomorrow and, and do some more tomorrow. Tonight we'll see how much I can get done skinning and getting everything on stretcher boards. Tomorrow probably be a camp day now that I'm caught up on all my checks, I'll work on some firewood, get some firewood up to the cabin, and splitting some wood, work on fueling up uh, the truck, and, and um, work on a few other things around camp. On the off day, sharpen my knives, uh, take care of all the furs, and then take care of the camp, and then get back at it the next day. So. I might shoot a video for you guys on skinning. You know, I don't know how that'll go over on YouTube and, and with the people, there's, Martin, they're pretty, pretty tame. But I might shoot a video on skinning, Martin. Oh, well, I smoke. I am so glad I don't have company tonight. I think it's the first day I don't have company. Not that I don't love people. I love all you guys, but man, I'm happy I don't have to entertain and take care of people or cook for people or anything like that tonight. I'm going to go get a big fire going at the cabin, dry out a little bit, sit down and fill the void and and think about how today went. And then if I got energy, I got to put it towards the furs. And then after that, I got to put it towards editing these videos. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying this trapping content. You know, I try to make it entertaining for you too and and educational and show you what i'm doing out here and you know, there's not many guys that can run a wilderness trap line anymore just for so many different reasons and i'm incredibly thankful and grateful that i can and and uh i thought i'd, I'd share it with you guys this year so let me know in the comments what you think it's really important you know i read every single comment i still try to get back to everybody on every single comment but I read them all and it helps drive me and, and helps push me on and, you know, and, uh, that's it for today. I am smoked.